Good day, boys and girls. I am Mrs. Cheryl Bradshaw. And today, our learning target is to solve problems involving unequal sharing. Now, if we look at our learning target, we are going to see this term, unequal sharing. Some of you all may be wondering what unequal sharing is about. Before we begin to solve problems, however, we are going to explore the term unequal sharing. And we'll begin with what you know. Every one of you at some point in time or the other would have shared things. You would have shared your cookies, but you would have shared them in equal shares. So you may have some cookies, and you would share it with your friend. Both of you would have the same number of cookies each. Let's look at an example. Let's say Jenny has 10 marbles. And Jenny wants to share those 10 marbles equally into two groups. So these are the two groups. I'll draw them here. And Jenny is going to share those 10 marbles. What she's going to do is make equal shares. So if she puts five in one group and five in the other group, she would have equal shares. Equal shares. Equal shares mean both groups or both shares have the same number. Or this group and this group have five in each. So five is equal to five. So then, if equal shares means the same number, or the same amount, then unequal share would mean not the same amount, or not the same number, or not equal. So we'll look now at unequal shares. Using the same example, Jenny has 10 marbles. But this time, she's going to make unequal shares. Unequal shares. So she's going to take the 10 marbles and she's going to share them into these two groups. In the first group, she's going to put eight. And in the next group, she's going to put two. Right away, we can see that this group has eight, and this group has two. Eight is not equal to two. So she has made two unequal shares. Now, she could have used those 10 marbles, and she could have shared them into three groups four groups, five groups, with unequal shares. She can also divide the 10 marbles into three unequal shares. The first one, she can put five. In the second one, she can put three. And in the third, she can put two. But five, is not equal to three, neither is it equal to two. None of these shares are equal, so we call them unequal shares. We can describe unequal shares. Let's look at these two shares that we have at the top. We can say that this share, eight, 
is six more than this share. We can say also this share is six less than this share. We can even say that this share is four times as many as this share because four times two will give us eight. We can even say that this share is three times more than this share. I can draw a picture to show that to you. This is two. So we can see that the share with eight has two four times, while the share with two has two once. We can also see that the shares with eight has one, two, three times more than the share with two. Remember, we can describe unequal shares. When we compare them, we can say that they are more than, less than, so many times as many as, or so many times more than. Now with that knowledge, we would move on to solving some problems. Before we solve any problem on an equal sharing, there are a few things that I want you to remember. I want you, when you read your problem, I want you to remember to identify the whole. I also want you to identify the number of parts. And I also want you to identify the different characteristics of the unequal shares. You make sure that you do that before you begin to calculate your answers. But before we begin this problem that I have on the board here, I want to go over with you the problem solving steps. We have to read first, then plan, then do, and finally we have to check. We're going to be using these steps as we try to solve these problems. Our first problem is on the board. As I read, you can read along with me. The sum of two numbers is 138. The larger number is five times the smaller number. What is the larger number? So here we have on the board two shares. And in reading, I am seeing that it's two shares. The first share is called a larger number. And the second share is called a smaller number. Because one is larger and the other is smaller, right away we can see that they are unequal shares. We also have the whole, which is 138. So we have identified our whole, we have identified our shares. What's the difference between this share and that share? The difference is this share is five times the smaller number. So how are we going to solve this? We're going to use this strategy, draw a diagram. So I am going to use larger number for the 
as a name in my diagram and smaller number as a name in my diagram. So I have larger number and smaller number. I am going to draw a bar for my larger number. And I am going to draw a bar for my smaller number. Why did I draw it so small? Because the problem told me that my larger number is five times my smaller number. So if this is my smaller number, my larger number would be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And my smaller number would be one. Just as small as one part of my larger number. Remember I told you that one way to describe my unequal shares is as so many times as many as. So this my larger number is five times as many as my smaller number. This two numbers together is going to be equal to 138. So remembering what we did in fractions, this is my whole. And my whole has one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. So to find out how many in each part, what do I do? I can divide. So I put 138 divided by 6. One hundred and thirty-eight divided by six. Thirteen divided by six is two. We group one. Eighteen divided by six is three. So in each one of my parts, I have twenty-three. Twenty-three, 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 and twenty-three. So right away I can see that my smaller number is 23 and my larger number is 23 multiplied by 5. 23 multiplied by 5. 5 3s are 15, 5 2s are 10, and 1 is 11. 115. So what's my question? What is the larger number? So the larger number is 150. I'm going to check to make sure that is correct. So the problem said the sum of two numbers is 138. So if I put 115 as my larger number, and I put 23 as my smaller number, if I add them together, I should get 138. 5 and 3 is 8. 2 and 1 is 3. Bring down the 100 there. So we can see the sum of these two numbers is 138. So my answer. 115 is correct. 115 is the larger number.
let us read problem number two. As I read, you can read at home. The sum of the ages of Mr. Khan and his son is 44 years. His son is 18 years younger than him. What is Mr. Khan's age? Let's try to understand our problem. Our problem says the sum. of the ages. So that there is our whole 44 years. The shares are Mr. Khan and his son. What do we know about the shares? We know that his son is 18 years younger than him. So we have two unequal shares, one that is larger and one that is smaller. So we would use another one of those bars that I showed you. We're going to practice using that while we solve this. You can do it at home and see if you can come up with the answer before I do it. So this is Mr. Khan. And this is his son. And Mr. Khan's share is larger than his son's. So this is Mr. Khan's share. And this is his son's share. We know the whole. The whole there is 44. I'm going to put this line here so that it's equal with his sons. But Mr. Khan has 18 years more than his son because if his son is 18 years younger than him, it means that he is 18 years older than his son. Mr. Khan is his son's age plus 18 more years. Now if I take these three parts and I put them together, I will get 44. So if I remove this 18, 44 I would remain with this part and this part so let's calculate 44 take away 18 I'll regroup one from the four So that is 26 years. Now I have to share this 26 years between his son and between part of his age. So 26 divided by 2 is 13 years. So this means that his son is 13 years and Mr. Khan is 13 and 18 years old. So we're going to put those two amounts of years together and we'll get Mr. Khan's age, which is what we want to find out. 18 and 13 equal to 31 years. And we can add Mr. Khan's age and his son's age and see if we get the total of 44 years to check. 
that's uh, 31 and 13 is equal to 44 years. That's the end of our second problem. It's, we use the same strategy of drawing a diagram. But our diagram in this problem is different from the diagram that we used before. Remember, in unequal shares, you also have one share that can be more than another share. In this problem, as I read it, you can follow it at home. Ramesh filled five of the jars and two of the tins shown below using 72 kilograms of flour. Each tin had twice as much flour as each jar. What was the mass of flour in each jar? I'm going to read it over. Ramesh filled five of the jars and two of the tins shown below using 72 kilograms of flour. Each tin had twice as much flour as each jar. What was the mass of flour in each jar? Now let's try to understand our problem. We have our hole which is 72 kilograms of flour. We have our shares. We have tins and jars. We have five jars and two tins. We have our characteristic, and I'm going to underline it. It said each tin had twice as much as each jar. The question is, what was the mass of the flour in each jar? The strategy I'm going to use to solve this problem is a combination of guess and check, draw a table, and look for a pattern. So I'm going to draw my table over here. Jar, one jar, one tin, calculate, and total. So since we are using the guess and check method, I'm just going to make a guess. I'll say that one jar has maybe three kilograms. So one jar has three kg. And because our problem said that each tin has twice as much flour as each jar, then one tin will be six kg. Now I'm going to calculate. Since I have five jars, five multiplied by three will be 15. And since I have two tins, six multiplied by two will be 12. When I put both of them together, I get 27. A 27 kilograms is not 72 kilograms. So this guess is a wrong guess. So I'm going to Move it up. 
I'm going to carry it to four. Four kilograms, which means the tins would be eight ki kilograms. My calculation would show that five multiplied by four equals 20. Eight multiplied by two is equal to 16. Six and three. So we have 36 kilograms. So even though 36 is not correct, we can see that 36 is half of 72. So if we double our amounts here, we are going to get the answer. Let's try that. So one jar can have eight kilograms. One tin going to be double the eight, double this eight also, which is going to be 16 kilograms. Eight multiplied by five, which will be 40. And 16 multiplied by two, which will be 32. If we add 40 and 32, our answer is 72 kilograms. So a question asks, what was the mass of the flour in each jar? The flour in each jar was 8 kilograms. When we put them together and we add them, we got 72. The flour in each jar is 8 kilograms. Let us read problem number four. Remember we are going to look for the whole and we are also going to look for our unequal shares. Mrs. James paid $154.95 for three identical notebooks and seven identical pens. Each notebook cost $4.95 more than each pen. How much did each notebook cost? I'm going to read it again. Mrs. James paid $154.95 for three identical notebooks and seven identical pens. Each notebook cost $4.95 more than each pen. How much did each notebook cost? So our whole is $154.95. I'm going to write it down here. Whole. $154.95. Our unequal shares are notebooks, three of them, and pens, seven of them. What do we know about our shares? Our problem says each notebook costs $4.95 more than each pen. So each notebook, the share is more than each pen. I'm going to draw, and as I draw, I am going to do the working and the calculations right next to it. So let's draw to represent each notebook. Well, this bar 
would represent a notebook. This bar would represent a pen. The pen is less than the notebook. The notebook has an extra piece on the bar that stands for four dollars and ninety-five cents. Now our problem says that we have three notebooks. So I can draw the same type of bar three times. And we have how many pens? We have seven pens. So I'm going to draw my pens. This would be one pen. This bar here would represent another pen. This bar here would represent another pen. Then I can put more pens here. Six pens. Seven pens. All of that is equal to our whole, which is one hundred and fifty four dollars and ninety five cents. Now, from our drawing, we have some equal shares here for the pen. All the pens are the same price, right? If we remove what is extra on our notebooks, we would end up with each of these parts being equal. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the three, $4.95, written three times from our whole, which is $154.95. $4.95 multiplied by three. Three fives are 15. Three nines are 27 and one is 28. Three fours are 12, and two is 14. So the extra is $14.85. I am going to take it away from the $154.95. $154, take away $14.85. Five take away five, one, zero, $140.10. This $140.10 can be evenly divided between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parts. $140.10 divided by 10 is equal to Fourteen dollars and one cent. So each one of these parts is fourteen dollars and one cent. And we can write fourteen dollars and one cent all the way down. Right away, we are seeing that one pen will be $14.01, but they are asking you for how much did each notebook cost. We have three notebooks, so this is one notebook. This is the other notebook, and this is the other notebook. So to find out for one, 
we have to put our $14.01 together with our $4.95. So we get add $14.01 to $4.95. Five and one is six, nine, eight. So one notebook cost eighteen dollars and ninety six cents. Now look at problem number five. While I read it, you can read it at home. There are 600 children in a school. Half of the boys is 150 more than one quarter of the girls. How many girls are in the school? I'm going to read it again. There are 600 children in a school. Half of the boys is 150 more than one quarter of the girls. How many girls are in the school? Let's look at our whole. Right away we can find our whole. Our whole is 600. 600 children. And our shares are boys and girls. We also know that our boys, half of them is more than one quarter of our girls. How are we going to solve this problem? The strategy we, got, we are going to use, we are going to be using a little bit of fractions, logical reasoning, and we are going to draw a diagram. So I'm going to draw a diagram to represent the unequal shares. Boys, this bar would represent one half. The problem says that it's 150 more than quarter of the girls. So I'm putting 150 here. And then I'm going to put the girls I'm going to let this bar represent one quarter. And the whole for the girls would have four quarters, just like that one. And the whole for the boy would have another bar to make the half. So these would be the unequal shares. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six parts that are the same size. And we have 150 and the half for the boys and another 150 and the other half for the boys. All of that is equal to six hundred children. Now let's solve. Let's calculate. If we put these two extra on the boys together, which is 150, we'll have 150 multiplied by 2, which is 300. We can remove that 300 from the 600 children, subtract 300, which is 300. Now that, that 300 represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, these six parts. So we divide that 300 by 6, and we end up with 50. So in each part, we'll have 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. 
The question asks, how many girls are in the school? So we have four quarters. Each quarter represents 50. So it's 50 multiplied by 4, which is equal to 200 in girls. We can check. If we add our boys together, we'd have three, 300 boys here and another 100 boys, which would be 400. 400 add 200 will give us 600 children in the school. Final problem comes from SEA 2019 paper. It says Maya has 285 stickers, Rene has 350 stickers, and Zara has 175 stickers. How many stickers must Rene? and Maya give to Zara so that the three girls will have the same number of stickers. Now if you look at this problem, we do not have a whole. What we have are three unequal shares. And I'm going to write them on the board. Maya. Rene and Zara. Maya has 285 stickers. Zara has 175 stickers. And Rene has 350 stickers. The question is asking you to change these unequal shares into equal shares. So what are we going to do? We are going to change, first of all, when we look at our numbers, we recognize right away, using mental mathematics strategies, that this 350 and this 175 has a certain relationship. 175 is half of 350, or 350 is two times 175. So we can take these two numbers and change it into three equal shares. So three, 350 gives you 175, 175, and Zara's share is also 175. Because we want to find out how many stickers must Rene and Maya give to Zara so that the, all three girls will have the same number, same number of stickers. So we are looking for equal shares. So we have divided these two shares into three equal shares, which brings us to this number. If we look at this number, we recognize that the sum of the digits is 15, which makes this number divisible by 3. So 285 divided by 3, 3 nines are 27, and 1, 3 fives are 15. So we can have three equal shares, 95, 95, and 95. And when we add these together, we get 270. So right away, each child, we can see that each child would have 270. 
now you have equal shares. But we have to find out how many stickers Rene and Maya need to give to Zara so that Zara could come up to 270. Maya has 285. So to give Zara so that she could get up to there, Maya must only have 270. So 285 subtract 270 is 15. So Maya has to give Zara 15 stickers. Maya gives 15 stickers. Let's find out about Rene. Rene must have 270. So I'm going to remove from 350, I'm going to take 270. So Rene has to give Zara 80 stickers. So Rene gives 80 stickers. In total, they would have given 95, just as you saw there. Now in this problem, it was slightly different. We didn't have holes. We had three unequal shares. And we used those three unequal shares to change it to equal shares. All throughout this lesson, we have been using our problem solving steps where we plan, we read, we plan, we do, and then we check. We also used some problem solving strategies, draw a diagram, logical reasoning, guess and check, draw a table, and look for a pattern. In solving unequal sharing problems, first we have to identify our whole. Next, we identify our unequal parts. Find out what's the characteristic that make each part unequal, and then begin to calculate. And remember, if you follow these problem solving steps, you will always be right. Thank you.